There's a well-kept secret in the 3D printing community that the trick to getting a high quality print is by rinsing your filament and letting it soak overnight for good- Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. The material used by most FDM 3D printers is hygroscopic, meaning it absorbs moisture readily from the air. This can cause issues with print quality and has led to a secondary market of 3D printing filament dryers that are used to bake the moisture out of material. The filament manufacturer Everyone reached out to me recently and asked me to make a video about their PLA Plus and I thought this is the perfect time to test out an experiment I've been wanting to try for a while. I wanted to try and really quantify how drying filament can improve the quality of a print, so I set up a three-part experiment. First, we're going to run some 3D prints with dry PLA. Then we're going to submerge it in water for 24 hours, print something with it, then we're going to dry it and repeat the experiment. The printer I'm using for this experiment is the Mingda Rock 3. It's a direct drive printer that gives repeatable results, so it's one less variable I have to track down. While I was recording this video, my lapel microphone finally bit the dust. So here's a quick shot of me, just so you don't forget what I look like. The first step of this process is to establish a baseline. I didn't have an empty spool that I could use to tear the scale, so instead I just took the total weight and subtracted down to 1000 grams to get the spool weight. That's not the most scientific way to go about it, but I think it'll work for what we're doing. After drying the filament for 12 hours at 45 degrees C, I printed out my first two control models, which will be used as a baseline. They look really good, there's a very high shine to them. Uh, the bottom layer looks okay and there's some light stringing seen throughout. But generally speaking, for a part that was printed on a machine that wasn't necessarily tuned for that filament, I'm fairly happy with it. Calibration cube looked good as well. There's some slight ringing on the edges, but again, I think that's really visible because of this high gloss material. With those two parts finished, it's time to get to the fun part. Because I didn't want to account for hot and cold as additional variables, I submerged the PLA Plus into a tub of room temperature water and let it soak for 24 hours. Waiting was the hardest part, so after submerging it, I figured I had some time to kill. I'm not entirely sure what I was expecting, but after letting it dry, I was surprised that the filament looked pretty much the same. I've seen brittle filament that's absorbed moisture before that shattered in many places, but that didn't really happen here. After letting the filament air dry for 12 hours, I found that it only really increased by about 25 grams. For reference, a typical 3D benchy is between 12 and 15 grams, so it's about the difference of two benchies. Typically, when printing with material that's absorbed moisture, you'll hear a crackling or a popping sound as all the moisture that's been absorbed into the material is expelled as steam when it exits the hot end. Not only did I not hear any of that during printing, but I was surprised to see that the parts looked almost completely identical. There's a small amount of stringing, but it's present in the same place on both models. I marked the bottom of the models that printed using wet filament, and you'll see there's only really one defect that gives it away. This little pockmark is typical of wet filament, and it's usually caused by the beginning of an extrusion line. The nozzle hasn't fully primed, you get a little bit of a void where there should be material, and you can see it sort of sputters in. That was the only real defect that was visible. The stringing on the wet model is very close to the stringing on the control model, and the same thing is present in the calibration cubes. Their surfaces are nearly identical. It's kind of hard to tell them apart. This is not at all what I was expecting, and I thought there would be a much more dramatic difference between material that had been baked for 12 hours and material that had been submerged for 24. This brings us to the final part of our experiment, drying the wet filament and running another sample print. I used the Cyclopes filament dryer by Ibos, which is the perfect fit for this application because it allows you to set the time and temperature separately. I set the temperature to 45 degrees C and set the timer for 3 hours. 3 hours may not seem like a lot of time, but I watched an excellent video by Stefan over at CNC Kitchen where he used a vacuum system to dehydrate his filament. This resulted in the largest reductions in weight coming in the first few hours with diminishing returns after that. The results were about what I expected. There was definitely less stringing present in this benchy than the benchy that was printed with the wet filament. There's still a little bit of stringing, but generally speaking the quality is what you'd expect from a part that had been dried. This brings us to the end of our experiment. Now we're going to compare all three printed samples and see what we can learn from this process. I used the pen plotter toolhead that I designed for the Ender 3 to make a display board for the wet, dry, and control samples. The samples are marked on the bottom, but I still wanted a quick visual way to tell them apart. First up is the control sample. This is the part that was printed after the filament had been dried for 12 hours immediately after being removed from the vacuum bag. It looks pretty good, there's some stringing, and generally speaking it's a about what I'd expect for a PLA print on an untuned printer. Next we're looking at the wet sample. There's definitely more stringing present, but it's not a tremendous amount. 
This was definitely the most surprising part of the experiment for me. I was fairly confident that the wet filament would have a lot of print quality issues, like stringing and layers that didn't fully start, but I was surprised to see it looked more or less like the original control sample. Finally, we have the sample that's been dried after being submerged, and I think this is the highest in quality of the three of them. So overall, the results of this experiment were pretty surprising. I was expecting PLA to be a lot more sensitive to moisture than it appears it really is. There are a couple of conclusions to take away from this, but I think the most important one is more testing is needed. This was done using PLA+, which is a type of PLA that uses a certain additive to increase mechanical strength. So I'm not sure what that additive is, but it very well may be related to the fact that this material doesn't appear to be as hygroscopic as I was expecting. I'll probably be repeating this experiment in the future with other materials like nylon, PETG, and TPU that are more hygroscopic and more readily absorb moisture from the air. In the meantime, you can leave me a comment below if you have any questions about my testing process, and as always, thanks for watching, have fun printing.